Palantir is one of the most exciting enterprise technologies to emerge in the space in quite some time. But what exactly is Palantir and how is it different than other enterprise technologies that are out there? That's what I want to talk about here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world reach their third stage of digital transformation success. And one of the enterprise-wide technologies that we're seeing more organizations look into and deploy as part of their digital transformations is a product called Palantir. And Palantir doesn't really fit neatly into one category. It's not really an ERP system. It's not really a data warehouse. It's not really a business intelligence tool. It's not really middleware, but it's sort of a hybrid or combination of all those things. So what I wanna to do today is talk about what exactly Palantir is, along with some of the strengths and weaknesses of the product, as well as how to identify whether or not Palantir might be the right fit for your organization. So first it helps to understand what exactly Palantir is, and then I'll get into the strengths and weaknesses later in this video. But first, Palantir is essentially a system or a technology that ties together multiple systems. On the surface, it's sort of an interoperability based solution that allows you to tie together multiple systems. A lot like middleware, if you remember the concept of middleware from 20 years ago, it's a technology that can help tie together siloed and disparate systems throughout an organization. However, it does a lot more than that. It also provides data processing and data reporting capabilities. It even provides artificial intelligence and machine learning to analyze and predict some of that data that's captured within the system. It also includes an operational layer too that allows you to manipulate and transact on data and then push that data back into their native systems. So it's almost like it's an ERP system or an enterprise-wide enterprise system without necessarily needing to rip out the guts or the back office systems that are already in place. Now, Palantir has three different types of core offerings. I'm gonna talk about Palantir in general throughout this video, but I do wanna break down what the three core systems are. First, you have Palantir Foundry. Palantir Foundry is the more common system that we see within the Palantir suite of products. And Foundry is that operating system that ties together data, collects data, allows you to manipulate that data, and integrate that data across multiple systems. There's also Palantir Gotham. And Gotham is really a way to leverage the data that's captured in Foundry in a way that leverages artificial intelligence to provide decision analysis. So it can provide you different scenarios and different artificial intelligence driven outcomes based on those scenarios so that you can make decisions based on that AI and based on the data that's been captured within the system. And then finally, you have Palantir Apollo, which is the sort of operating system that allows you to manage and tie together workflows across multiple systems and multiple functions within an organization. Now, Palantir is commonly used in government, in military and aerospace sorts of environments but it's increasingly being used in the private sector as well. For example, complex supply chains can benefit from Palantir. Utilities and other field-based organizations that have disparate crews and inventory and systems can be another beneficiary of Palantir. But regardless of what industry you're in, these three products from Palantir can be a different way of thinking about your digital transformation and the types of technologies you use to enable that digital transformation. Now there are a number of functional and technical strengths that Palantir brings to the table. Starting with some of the technical strengths, it's a fairly user-friendly system. It's a modern cloud-based system, so it can be easier to use and learn for organizations and their employees. It also provides a highly secure way to share data among systems and not only share data, but also report and visualize on that data. And then finally, on the functional side, there's also trainings and learning tools that are baked into the product itself that can make user adoption a bit easier than other systems out there. Now on the technical side, there are a number of other strengths. You have, first of all, a secure way to tie together and integrate data. So on the technical integration side, it's a pretty strong tool set in that regard. It's also a great way to provide compliance, auditability, and data security within the system so that you can rest assured that your data is not a breach and that you're not at risk of a cybersecurity breach. 
Now, in addition to these functional and technical strengths, there's a number of other strengths that I think are even more fundamental than what I've already described. First and foremost, Palantir can be a great way to deploy an enterprise-wide technology and get some of the benefits that ERP systems traditionally have provided, but at a much lower cost and lower risk. So in other words, we don't have to rip out all of our core backend systems to get some of the capabilities described here within the Palantir product suite. Instead, you can use Palantir as a way to leverage the technology you already have and ensure that you're making better use of and getting more value out of those systems. This significant benefit can ultimately lead to a higher ROI, lower cost, and potentially higher benefits than other types of enterprise technologies. Now, in addition to the functional and technical strengths I described, it's also worth looking at the functional and technical weaknesses of Palantir, just so you're aware of the risks and the trade-offs. Now, one new weakness relates to the data side of things, and that is that it can be hard to track data as it moves throughout the system. It can be hard to track that data along the way. And Palantir also has its own data storage system. In other words, you can't make use of the functionality of Palantir until you move the data from your core operational systems into Palantir, or at the very least until you build that integration point to where the data flows from your core operational system into Palantir. Now another weakness is that the setup is oftentimes slow and can be time consuming and expensive for organizations. So if you're a smaller organization, it may be too robust for you. It may be overkill for what you need. It may take you too long. You may not have the technical sophistication to deploy and manage a product like Palantir. So it really is built and most commonly used by larger organizations that have more complex processing and data and security needs. In addition, it's been known to be time consuming to set up the software. And it's also been known to be a bit slow in processing data, largely because it's consuming and processing such massive amounts of data from multiple systems across large organizations. So those are some of the weaknesses to be aware of at a high level. But even more fundamental than what I've already described is the fact that Palantir might be a short-term solution that fixes some of the deficiencies and gaps of your core enterprise technologies, but ultimately it doesn't fix the root cause, which may be that your core operational technologies are outdated, or perhaps they're no longer maintained, or perhaps their products that are being sunset. And so it can be an expensive way to build this sort of a Band-Aid to fix and to augment what you already have, which is fine. It may be the best short-term and long-term strategy for you as an organization, but you may also find that at the end of the day, you're still gonna to have to replace some of your core operational systems in addition to deploying a product like Palantir. So I hope this has provided a high level overview of what Palantir is, what some of the strengths and weaknesses are, and whether or not it might be a good fit for your organization. For more information about other types of technologies that are out there, I encourage you to download our annual digital transformation report which is a report that we publish that includes independent software reviews and rankings, as well as other digital transformation best practices that are meant to help you through your digital transformation journey. I've also included a number of other resources below that are meant to help you. So I encourage you to check that out via the links below in the description field. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day.